Hey guys, welcome back to Exonica. Only a couple days left in uh, the eight crazy nights that we're doing so far. So hope you're enjoying it and these tutorials are making sense. Uh, if not, let us know. And uh, if you want some more, let us know as well. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about uh, some of the things and I do for compositing. Uh, the tips and just kind of small things like that. A lot of people like to use stock footage and uh, you should because it's really useful. But uh, you just can't lay it on to a, a track and then expect it to be good to go and render it out. So I'm going to show you some of the tips I use to composite and uh, kind of how to match the stock footage with the scene itself. So uh, this should be pretty useful. It's a little bit of a longer tutorial, so I'm sorry about that. But uh, you can kind of fast forward to parts you want to see or uh, feel free to view it again if you didn't catch everything. Uh, let's go into After Effects. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Uh, this one might be a little bit longer because I'm talking about some compositing techniques that I like to do. Um, when I work inside of After Effects, so uh, bear with me and hopefully it'll be interesting to you and I'll try to burn through as fast as possible and uh, in case you guys want to go back and look at something you can just go uh, watch that section again. So uh, here we go, I got that track shot that we did in the last one with the uh, bullet hole in it and I'm uh, basically going to talk about how I do my muscle flashes and uh, you know getting some of these extra scene elements to, to look right within the scene. Uh, so first let's get this bullet hole looking like it's supposed to be in there. Um, so the first thing I do is I apply a tint to the bullet hole. We'll zoom in here so we can kind of see it a little bit better. And um, if, it kind of gets annoying when these little uh, scale boxes and everything kind of come up. So if you want to hide those, just do uh, Command-Shift-H. will uh, hide all of your layer uh, bounding boxes. Command-Shift-H or uh, Control-Shift-H if you're on a PC. And uh, okay, so take your little color swatcher here and just sort of select an area around it. And so I got this kind of beige looking thing and then you can just sort of play with how much you want to tint. And uh, now you're done. Uh, not really. I'm going to use the curves feature next. Kind of bring it in and you're going to start to play with your curves a little bit to sort of up some of the whites, you know, and fix some of the dark areas. And then come into your, uh, your red channel that's going to affect how much red's there, and so you can kind of see how it starts to slowly blend in. Uh, it's a little more yellow, so you're going to throw some green, just a little bit of green in there to get that yellow, and and uh, you know play with it from here on out, and uh, you should be able to get it blended in pretty well. Throw some blue, see what that does. Uh, a little bit of blue, and uh, you know the bullet looks pretty natural at 100%. Scale in a little bit, you can kind of see it's little off but uh, that's alright we'll put some blur on it here in a second fix it right up so really it's just uh, the tint to tint towards uh, the color you want and then throw some curves on there and and get it looking hidden in there pretty well um, like I said the last effect is a fast blur gotta put a space throw some fast blur on there and just uh, you can see blurring it up sort of changes the game a little bit uh, you know keep it on like a five or a six got a seven here and uh, obviously it just sort of uh, now just kind of appears in. It's there. Boom. Look at that. Looking pretty good. Okay. Uh, and then this next technique is I do this a lot for when an element needs to be um, hidden behind something else. Like you can see the terrorist's head kind of goes over it right there. And uh, as of right now, I have a mask on it to hide that layer up. Uh, that works, but... Um, <laughs> The most effective way to do this, and I do this all the time with my muzzle flashes, is to create a new solid, so Command Y, or come up here to Layer New Solid, and uh, you can make it black, make it whatever you want. Okay. And so you're going to get this black solid. Uh, drop it down, and uh, parent it to your null, T for opacity, and uh, drop it all the way down. So now, what you can do is come in and uh, draw a quick roto mask around your terrorist's head and hand. Boom. Uh, MM, bring up your mask options. Mask path, keyframe it. Step down to pull your mask up again. Sort of just rotate it just a little bit. Kind of get it right where you want it. Step down again. You're going to rotate it. Sort of move it right how you want it to be. Sometimes you have to really get in there and sort of touch it up with some minor adjustments just to make sure his hand gets covered up. And then finish it out all the way through. And he should be completely out of the shot now. So if we take a look at it, 
It looks pretty good. Uh, okay, so uh, your mask is done. So you know you can cap off the end here by hitting Alt End Bracket, which is uh, end bracket is the one right above your return key, and uh, that should layer it off, and then it's done. So what you have now is a little black solid that kind of covers up his head and his hand. And you only need it for right about here, so you can kind of cut your clip, alt beginning bracket. And so that pretty much, as you can see, obscures his face and the uh, covers up kind of the, the hole when it goes in there right up in here. <laughs> so what you're going to want to do then is uh, change your track mat on your metal hole or whatever object you're trying to obscure. Track mat's right here. Change it to uh, alpha mat or as I meant to say alpha inverted so now that you have your alpha inverted what's gonna happen is it's gonna obscure it right there you can see it and then this is when you can go in and actually like refine your uh, mask points so obviously right here it needs to be obscured a little bit so you can come in and sort of refine your mask towards now not even there at all and so if you take a look at it now you kind of see it's obscured by his hand and uh, you know still not perfect so just sort of scroll in and uh, change it to where his hand pretty much takes up obscures the, the bullet hole so that really helps sells the shot right there because it's actually like he's physically interacting by covering something up and uh, I always like to come in on my black solid and my feather options and feather by like you know like two or three pixels just so the edge isn't so harsh so now he's actually physically obscuring the object behind him and that works for uh, anything. I did that a lot when the bullet holes, when he's covering up the bullet holes that are directly behind him. Uh, the next thing you probably want to know is uh, the muzzle flashes. So let's see, the bullet comes in right here, so there should be pretty much a muzzle flash right here. All my stock footage that I'm using here and use all the time are from uh, Video Copilot, uh, Andrew Kramer's Action Essentials 2, uh, the 2K version. Uh, it's actually pretty cheap compared to some of the other stuff out there and uh, it's very high res very high quality stuff and uh, you know it just changes the game uh, for your action uh, movies and you know it's it's invaluable I would highly recommend going to get it and uh, how about some free stuff Andrew huh what do you think I'm plugging you didn't think so I'll wait I'll wait for the email don't worry about it uh, anyway back to your muzzle flashes I got mine in the muzzle folder um, obviously we're gonna wait for the Mac to catch up. There we go. Okay, so in your muzzle flash folder, uh, you can kind of see the gun sort of facing uh, away from the camera to an extent. So really you just need to throw on a, uh, a straight muzzle flash. And so we'll bring that out. Uh, begin bracket, which again is above your, uh, your return key, brings it to the point in the timeline that you uh, want to use it on. And uh, change it from normal uh, blending mode to add and that's gonna really have it interact with the scene better it just kinda looks better all around and uh, I like to change my 16 bits per channel I like to click on it here change it from 8 to 16 and then change your working space down to the sRGB I just think it blends better uh, on the add mode with things like muzzle flashes and fire and so now you're thinking man that doesn't look right <laughs> something's wrong and so what we're gonna do actually is apply the same idea with the black black mask so make another solid control command Y whichever one you want to do or layer new solid boom uh, move it down to uh, right above your muzzle flash so take its opacity all the way down kinda hide your muzzle flash for a second so you can see what you're doing and uh, basically all you need to do is uh, draw a real quick mask around the uh, foreground element that obscures the muzzle flash so boom doesn't need to be super accurate in some spots because the muzzle flash isn't going to be taking up a lot of space so don't blow a bunch of time rotoing things you don't need to roto so now you've got your mask bring it back up to kind of see what you did uh, looks pretty decent so then bring your muzzle flash back into it and uh, as you can see it's just it works just fine but that's because the black layer is actually above it so what you're gonna want to do is change the muzzle flash over track mat again to uh, alpha inverted and you can see now it's actually obscured and you say well that looks really crappy because the edges are uh, so jagged well you can fix that with a quick uh, F key 
to bring up your mask feather and feather your edges just a little bit. Eight usually works pretty good. Sort of hides the jagged edges of it. And the muzzle flash only lasts for one frame. So it's going to be boom, on, off. There'll be some residual smoke left behind. And uh, that's fine. Uh, you can kind of go in front. Or if you want to take the time to uh, animate your mask, it's just the same as rotoing. Bring up your mask options, MM on the keyboard. Or uh, if you want to find it, just twirl it down. Should be under the masks thing. Uh, mask one. There's your mask path, so hit your mask path animate, and then you can animate through on the uh, the roto of the mask layer itself, which is always fun. Uh, so pretty much just sit here and uh, shift it along so it smoke covers it up. But uh, you know, from there, it uh, make sure you just kind of line your stuff up. You have to make sure your mask is lined up when the uh, bullet hole hits. And right here's good. Obviously, I'm doing this real quick, but you get the idea. Do that, boom. Kind of comes in. The gun fires. The bullet hole enters, and it moves on. And the actor reacts. Uh, so not quite done just yet. Uh, another thing I like to add in is when the bullet hole hits, you're going to want to have obviously some kind of effect happen on the wall. And so I like to come up and we'll throw a uh, particle hits cork. Drop that in. Obviously, you're going to want to parent that to the null so it's tracked in. Uh, begin bracket, bring it to where you are. And it's right here. So we'll want to scale it down. A lot. All right, now you can see that the cork hit is uh, kind of coming on. Particles are coming off like it's interacting with the surface itself. Uh, but it's not quite there because the dust. So you're going to take the tint effect that we used earlier and drag and drop it onto the core kit and uh, just sort of take the white and uh, keyframe or uh, eye drop something right around it and then just sort of play with the amount. You can add the curves on top of that, but usually that'll make it look pretty good. <clears throat> so just kind of play with how much you want. That way it sort of matches the color of the scene. So boom, hits and the cork element stays and animates so pretty fancy stuff but uh yeah overall that's uh how we do a lot of our effects obviously you know takes a lot of work to get this going but um you know once you layer these effects in and color grade them just right and take time to do the roto you can uh, get your final shot to look a little bit like this and uh you know it's obviously not i mean it's it's, it's pretty convincing I uh, think it looks pretty good. I was pretty happy with the shot. And then once Jeff sound designed it up with the tin hitting, it's, uh, you know, it's pretty pleasing to the eye and it sounds right. So uh, it takes a lot of time, but in the end, it's it's definitely worth it. And, uh, you know, it helps sell the shot. So I hope this was helpful to you and the compositing. Uh, a lot of people just think they can buy stock footage and slap it on to their uh, action footage and it'll look good. Uh, not the case. You need to change blending modes, maybe color correct it a little bit, and then uh, you know mask things out and make sure they look right. Uh, if you don't do that, it's just not going to sell a shot. It's going to be kind of an eyesore and uh, you know just sort of affects your overall movie quality. But I um, hope this was helpful. If you guys got any more questions or uh, want some more information, just leave a comment or message us, and uh, we try to answer everything uh, to the best of our ability uh, as quick as possible. So uh, just hit me up. And I hope you're enjoying Akshanika, and uh, I will catch you guys next time.